the latest tech. I'm Alexa. I can answer your questions. Interviews. And we are evolving and we are seeing an amazing opportunity that is happening. Accessibility. Accessibility is, is, is one of our core values. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome to another exciting edition of Double Tap Television. Thank you guys, as always, for getting involved. The emails constantly come in at feedback at ami.ca and on Twitter, we reply to you all the time. It is at Double Tap Canada. I am Mark Aflalo in a somewhat unique environment today and welcoming Stephen Scott. Stephen, I can see that you're kind of in a similar environment as we talk about getting fit for the new year on this week's episode of Double Tap TV. So, so let's, let's start by describing, Stephen, where are you right now? So I'm in the bowels of my house, uh, I'm just actually below my studio that we normally record in, in the house, and I've got a home gym, Mark. I've got a home gym where, you know, in here I've got all kinds of kit. I've got a treadmill, I've got a water rower. Those are fabulous. Uh, beautiful sound of the water. Actually, the only problem is it makes you want to go to the toilet every time you use it, which is very irritating. Uh, I've also got some uh, weights behind me as well uh, in a big rack. There are lots of those. And you might be thinking to yourself, how does a guy like Stephen Scott, who eats his weight in chocolate most of the time, uh, how does he have a room like this and still maintain the size he does? I've got to say, it is uh, hard work. That's the answer. Um, you know, the answer is also that I don't use this room. This is my wife's room. In fact, what you can't see behind the camera is the chest freezer where the ice cream and the, the, the fun <laughs> stuff is stored. That's the only reason I ever use this room. Okay, well, um, you know, to give you an indication of what's going on here, you're actually in my bedroom, guys. Oh. Everybody at home, you are in Mark Aflalo's bedroom. And the reason we're here is because I'm standing in front of one of the tools we're going to talk about today, which is a Peloton bike. Now, this Peloton bike was one of the first connected exercise experiences. I, I think the Apple Watch might predate it, Stephen, if you want to talk about connected devices to help you stay fit. Um, but the Peloton bike is one that has become extremely popular throughout the world with its online classes. So on this bike here, you can see is a 32 inch touchscreen. It's actually powered by the Android operating system. And when you turn it on, it launches into the Peloton app and you can choose your types of classes, choose different instructors. There's a combination of live rides. If you want to join something that's scheduled or already in progress, you can also browse through a library of on-demand classes that might exist. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you know, you mentioned the Fitbit, you've mentioned the Apple Watch. You know, these are the first devices that I can think of that were connected, but it was the Apple Watch when it really got accessible. You know, that was the first time that we saw an accessible smartwatch that had all these functions in it. And of course, the Apple Watch is, is a great watch. And if you're a blind guy, or a blind girl, you're likely to spend a lot of money on what is a talking watch. And of course, the great thing about the Apple Watch is it talks, but it does other things like read your messages or give you your Twitter alerts or tell you the breaking news or give you your health advice. All of that spoken to you from its screen, direct to your ear if you wish. So, you know, really, really smart technology. And, you know, the ability that this new version that we have now, the Series 6 with, you know, ECG capability, with this new blood oxygen monitoring capability, being able to monitor your heart rate. These are really, really important functions that can help you. And you know, when you pair that with something like Apple Fitness Plus, again, a superbly, supremely accessible experience for someone with sight loss, you're able to use that together with, say, an Apple TV or your iPad or your iPhone, and it's giving you those real-time stats while you are exercising. And you, you know, even I am able to understand what my heart rate is, how long I've been going. That's the one I'm always interested in. How long has this been going? Uh, you know, all of that, that is really key. And all that information on my wrist, on screen, spoken back to me, whether you are blind or sighted. It's brilliant. You know, Stephen, when it comes to Peloton, uh, one of the things that was restricting people with disabilities, or especially visual impairment from using the bike is the fact that there was no accessibility features built in, which was surprising because it's built on the Android operating system. So, you know, I'm gonna log into my, my account over here and it's gonna show me all the stats, how, how many rides I've done, and we're not, gonna, we're not gonna tell you that today because I don't wanna embarrass other people who have done so many more workouts than I have. Um, but I do want to show people just how easy it is to turn on the accessibility features. You literally hit the settings button in the top right hand corner and then you go to device settings and then it brings up a very familiar interface for those people who are Android users. Now you swipe all the way down and you'll see right at the bottom 
accessibility. And when you hit accessibility, you're presented with three features. Again, very Android-like. Talk back, you could turn it on or off, select to speak, and switch access. So there's lots of different ways that you can use accessibility now, and Peloton has worked these core features into their app itself, so you've got a lot more description as to what's going on, very similar to the feedback that you're getting on Apple Fitness Plus. Now, when you talk about Peloton, you're having to buy that bike, which is a connected bike, and it's got all the fancy bits in it to make it work. It's got, of course, the account that you have to have in order for it to operate. You've got to sign up and pay monthly and all of that. And yes, that's true with Apple Fitness Plus as well. But in terms of hardware, you can use dumb hardware, which is great, right? You know, one of the issues I have with my treadmill here and with my rower is that there's lots of information on that screen that I just can't see. Lots of information I just don't know what's going on. So when I put it on, I'm putting it on a level I can just about understand and get to, I know how to raise the speed or you know incline, change the incline, whatever it might be, but that's about it. Uh, whereas with something like Apple Fitness Plus, I'm getting that information, they're guiding me through, actually helping me create those routines, those workouts that will make the difference. And it's the same with the rower, it's the same if you want to improve the strength or core, you can use dumbbells or weights for that as well. And all of that information, again, is audibly provided to you in a similar way to the Peloton, but maybe not with the, the price tag to go with it. Steven, you get on to your uh, piece of exercise equipment over okay. there. I've got my Peloton shoes I got a strap <sighs> on, which got the, uh, the Peloton cleats that uh, hop into the pedals and make it easier to support my body weight, of course. I've got my little towel ready to go. So we're gonna take a, we're gonna take a quick break. We're gonna hop on our exercise equipment. Let's, uh, let's, get, let's get a sweat going during the break and come back and see where we're at here on Double Tap TV. Love Double Tap TV? Listen to AMI-audio for Double Tap Canada every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern for news and reviews on everything tech. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome back to Double Tap TV. Thank you guys, as always, for getting involved. Lots of emails and feedback coming in every single week. Our email address is feedback at ami.ca. And on Twitter, we are at Double Tap Canada with that hashtag, which is ask Double Tap, Stephen Scott. I think we're gonna get a lot of questions, a lot of uh, feedback about this week's episode. I'm sitting here a little bit out of breath because I've been biking for the two and a half minutes of that break. Uh, how are you getting on over there? I can see that you're fiddling with a lot of buttons. Uh, how long have you been on there for? Yeah. Can you can you see what's going on here, Mark? Can you tell us what's, what's happening? Not really. I'm kind of focused on seeing straight because I've been on this bike for a little bit. Stephen, what's going on there? Um, I, I just can't get it to start. <laughs> you haven't even started? Come on, I'm looking down at my timer and I'm at, oh God, 26 seconds? I, I, don't, I don't think this thing's even on, Mark. Ah, do you know what? Forget it. I'm not doing it. I'm not playing. You're not giving it. <laughs> Stephen, you know, I can imagine as someone just like me who's trying to keep focus on this bike and I, I can see everything around me, for someone who has a visual impairment, even just walking out of their house and going for a, a brisk walk or a run to try and exercise can't be that easy, can it? It is really difficult, Mark. You know, the idea of going out for a quick run is almost impossible when you can't see, at least when you're on your own. Now, you can, of course, buddy up with someone and many people do that, but with the restrictions of lockdown over 2020, social distancing still in place, that adds more barriers, meaning that more of us are spending our time stuck at home. But here's a question. What if technology could make it possible to go for that run without the need for anyone by your side? How cool would that be? Well, that's the aim of Project Guideline. It's an initiative created by Google to harness the power of our smartphones to allow us to do just that, run independently. Now, joining me now via Zoom to talk about this is Ryan Burke, the creative producer lead for Google Creative Labs in New York. And he joins me from his home in the city. Great to have you here, Ryan. So tell me more about this amazing project. Sure. Well, first of all, I'm super excited to be here. So thanks for the invitation. Um, project Guideline is an early stage research project that is exploring how we can use on-device machine learning uh, to enable independent walking and running for exercise for the uh, blind and low vision community. Uh, and we're achieving that at present um, in the early stage that it is uh, using, you know, consumer level technology, hopefully something, some things that people already have in their pockets. Um, so it's a combination of uh, a mobile phone, a pair of headphones. Um, and the X factor here for us is a 
painted line on the ground, um, hence project guideline. Sounds interesting. So where did the idea come from? So th this project from the very beginning was sort of co-developed by uh, Thomas Panic, who is the CEO and president of Guiding Eyes for the Blind, which is a uh, nonprofit based in the New York area that uh, provides guide dogs uh, to individuals who are blind or who have low vision uh, free of charge. It's a wonderful organization. Um, and the, like the true origin is such that when I was much younger, my two younger sisters were volunteers at Guiding Eyes for the Blind, um, uh, part of their home socialization program. So as the puppies are growing up, um, they need to be exposed to different environments, to different people. Uh, so we were lucky to have, you know, maybe once a month have two Labrador Retriever uh, puppies come to the house and our job was just to play with them. So the idea in essence sounds simple, although I'm sure it's not at all. I'm thinking about things like weather, lighting, obstacles, even fragmentation of the line itself on the road. Can this really work where a blind person is able to run independently without anyone else around? You know, at present, the, the, the capabilities of the technology is such that we identify the line and, and approximate slash measure the position of the runner in relation to the line and then provide audio feedback in, to enable uh, the walker or runner to self-correct in order so that they get back on the line. Um, so to your original question, I do, I do want to be clear, this is still very early stage research. Um, there may be, in order for it to, to work, um, or I guess, uh, let me say this, um, the tech, very plainly, the technology does, doesn't presently support obstacle detection. Um, so in order for an individual to use the technology, um, there needs to be another sighted person in the loop, as we say, um, just to help orient the runner or the walker, uh, the user, if you will, um, to the course. Um, and then also just make sure, have them do a once over to make sure that there are no overhanging branches or there are no sticks or rocks in the path, um, et cetera. Obstacle detection, um, is something that we're very excited about and it's something that we're going to be looking at next. Uh, but I just want to be clear that for now, uh, that uh, is not part of the capability set of the technology. I think, to be honest, there are people out there who will just be so pleased to hear that this is even being considered, Ryan. Uh, let's talk about emerging tech trends here because I think there's a whole host of technologies that are already available or are in early development that could really benefit this project. And for those who want to use it, I'm thinking about things like augmented reality with the ability to provide information to a user via artificial intelligence. I'm also thinking about LiDAR and how the ability to live scan your environment could be a useful tool here. And then all of that converging with wearables. Glasses, of course, being the most obvious example here that would fit in so well with this project. Yes, most definitely. I mean, I think you definitely identified sort of three emergent technology areas that are sort of converging or could converge in a project like this. Um, for now, I, I will say that uh, there's still so much work on like the present trajectory of the technology, that being um, building a system that will enable an individual to run independently by use of a line. Um, but yes, I mean, there could be a glasses company that comes forward. There could be, um, you know, as we spoke about obstacle detection, you know, Google has a technology called AR Core, uh, which helps to do um, sort of depth mapping and understanding environments. Um, if we were, not if we were, but when we start to, to, to further explore the obstacle detection challenge, I mean, AR Core will be a part of it. That'll be key in order to be able to identify things in the path and other things in the environment. Um, so, I mean, I fully believe that this is just the beginning, whether it's with the Google or with outsiders and, you know, wh whoever solves this problem, um, you know, if it's Google, that's great. If it's someone else, that's also fantastic. Um, you know, we hope that this serves as an example, not just to inspire other Googlers, but also to inspire other technologists out in the world. Um, I mean, what's nice about this, about this project in, 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 uh, in one way is that, you know, this is applied machine learning. So the like sort of the research science that we're applying to solve this problem um, is published and open sourced. 
Um, so conceivably, another group of individuals could be using the exact same machine learning pipeline to, you know, in a parallel path, also try to solve the same problem that we are. Um, and to your point, you know, in terms of uh, whether it be LIDAR or whether it be depth cameras, so on and so forth, these are technologies that other technologies, technologists have access to. Uh, so, you know, by, by no means does, uh, you know, we have the exclusive rights to solve this problem. In the best case scenario, we're just served, so, serving as an example, as an inspiration for other technologists to take up the same challenge. But of course, one thing we never want to see come to an end are guide dog puppies, Ryan. They must stay. We didn't set out to uh, replace or supplant the existing technologies, whether it be a guide dog or whether it be a cane. This is just meant to be another potential option. Um, um, maybe used in conjunction or maybe used on its own in very, you know, sort of uh, constrained environments. Uh, but by no means are, are we interested in doing any sort of replacing. This is uh, purely a complementary um, and offering another option to those out there who would like to try it. Ryan, it's been great speaking with you about Project Guideline from Google. I look forward to the day that I can get back on the road and maybe you and I can go running together. Maybe you, me, and Thomas Panic from Guiding Eyes for the Blind. He sounds like a great guy, as to you. Ryan Burke, thank you so much. That was Stephen Scott in conversation with Ryan Burke, and I'm still a little bit out of, uh, well, I'm out of shape for sure, but out of breath a bit because I'm sitting here riding the Peloton. I think I'm gonna wind down and switch to a little wind down ride as we head into another break let's come back and let's dive into apple fitness a little bit more because this is the newest entry on the block and uh, i want to get your experience steven i know that obviously wearing your watch is essential to that service i want to understand how that all works especially for someone with visual impairment for more great double tap tv content visit ami.ca slash double tap This is Double Tap TV. We are back on Double Tap TV. Thank you guys again so much for being here. I am Marco Flalo, as always, joined by Stephen Scott. Both of us in our respective home gyms, I would call them. Mine happens to be a corner of the bedroom where the wife takes over for a couple hours a day. Whereas towards the end of the day, Stephen, I dive on for about 10 to 12 minutes. Um, and work up mm -hmm. whatever sweat or whatever uh, capacity I can probably do. Now, I know that you have had the opportunity to dive into Apple Fitness Plus. Um, was that easy to sign up for? Because it kind of just popped up one day and it was there after an iOS update. That's right. And uh, yeah, I must admit, I'm often very uh, skeptical of these things. I mean, I'm skeptical of any exercise, to be honest, um, because it involves doing something. And I'm against that most of the time. Uh, but on this one occasion, I've got to say, I was rather intrigued by what Apple Fitness offered, mainly because I know how Apple uh, are so committed to accessibility. So I thought, well, okay, I'm really hopeful that I'll be able to follow along with all of these classes and events that happen as a result of the Apple Fitness Club, if you like. And I logged in, I set everything up, and it was a very easy experience. I used the Apple TV to get the Apple Fitness app up and running. Uh, it guides you via your watch to set up as well, so the two essentially link together. And of course, you can do this with multiple watches and multiple people in the family. And again, all of that is fully accessible because I've got voiceover on my watch. I'm not actually wearing my watch at the moment, uh, which is kind of tells you all you need to know about my commitment to fitness. Um, but my, my uh, Apple Fitness app popped up on my watch at the time and it gave me all the information that I needed. I was able to swipe through and select settings and all the rest, and it wasn't really that much to do. It was quite a very simple setup, essentially just saying okay to having your watch and your TV link up. Once that's done, you're then into the app on the TV. Now, of course, this could be on your phone, it could be on your iPad as well, it's not just exclusive to Apple TV. Do you, Stephen, do you have to have a, a visual component to it? Do you have to have a TV or an iPad in front of you to take the class, or could you do it solely on the watch? Uh, no, you need to have a device of some kind. You have to connect it to either a phone or an iPad or an Apple TV. You have to have something else. You, you can control the, the whole workout via the watch. What the watch is really doing is it's tracking your measurements. It's tracking your vitals as you go along. It's watching your heart rate. It's keeping an eye on those activity rings as well. What's great is if you use the Apple TV, all of that is displayed on the screen whilst you're taking part in a class, which is really cool. I'd like to see Apple maybe consider a bit more description in the delivery because it would be really nice, like you've just said, to be able to listen 
to these classes, not necessarily watch them. Maybe that will come in time, but we're not there yet. But the overall experience is good. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that because I was thinking to myself a, a traditional you know, workout class, whether, you know, if you go into a cycling class or a spinning class, for example, you already have a preconceived notion of of what's around you and what's involved and, and where knobs are or certain things like that. So I think with a little bit of effort, if they add a little bit more what we call integrated describe video, where they're talking a little bit more descriptively about what's going on, um, I think that'll add so much more to the experience. But I think there's a little bit of description there already, just by the nature of you, A, knowing what kind of class you're going into. And in a lot of these classes, especially when it's, you know, weights and, and you know, resistance bands and stuff like that, they're describing what you need to do anyway. So a little bit more description, a little bit more effort into it, and it can go a long way for someone who can't see what's going on. Well, that's right. But I mean, you know, if you go on a rower, for example, you kind of know what you're going to have to do, right? I mean, you didn't buy a rower and then just leave it in the cupboard and forget about it and then have no idea what the purpose of it was anyway. Of course, you know what it does. You know you're going to have to grab that that handle. You're going to have to pull it towards you and, and so be it. And I think that's the key point here. Again, I mentioned this earlier. You can use the equipment you already have at home. If you have a treadmill that is essentially a clothes holder, really, which most of them are used as, Use that if you've got a spin bike or you've got an exercise bike or a rower at home or you've even just got some dumbbells or you've even just got a spare room that you've got some space in. That's what to use and you can find the right exercise for you. There are many on offer and they're always being updated. So, you know, lots of opportunities to get involved in it and that's what's brilliant. Uh, lots of different ways. You don't have to go out and spend thousands on a Peloton like one Marco Flalo might have done. Yeah, hey, listen, I'm financing this over like eight years, so it better do something in that eight year period, I'll tell you that. The other thing about Apple Fitness is that it's portable. You know, you could take it anywhere. You can do things in the office. You can do things on the go, whether you're traveling. I mean, not that anybody's traveling these days, but uh, you, you get where I'm, where I'm going with this. Stephen Scott, thank you as always for being here Thank try you. to get that 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 thing working maybe next time you'll actually be able to show us some progress i've got a hammer here i might see if that'll do it I'll give it a bit of a it is double tap tv on behalf of stephen scott i am mark of lalo thank you for being here we'll chat with you again next week for more great double tap tv content visit ami.ca slash double tap Hosted by Marka Flalo and Stephen Scott. Editing, Will Latar. Production assistants, Wendy Kaufman. Content review, Zachary Flalo. Social media, Andy Wynn. Segment producer, Sean Priest. Voiceover, Anna Vicino. Integrated described video specialist, Ron Rickford. Coordinating producer, Jennifer Johnson. Director, production, Kara Nye. Director Programming, Brian Perdue. VP Content Development and Programming, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2021, Accessible Media, Inc.